Today we'll be discussing the auteur theory. According to filmhustle.com, the auteur theory argues that a film is a reflection of the director's artistic vision. So a movie directed by a given filmmaker will have recognizable, reoccurring themes and visual cues that inform the audience of who the director is. Essentially, the director of a film is the author of the project, and we see the story through their vision. Don Hertzfeld is an independent filmmaker who makes all of his films with stick figure drawings. The filmmaker makes surreal animation that is equal parts goofy, outlandish, and existential. GQ magazine called Don Hertzfeld films simultaneously tragic and hilarious and philosophical and crude and deeply sad and fatalist, yet stubbornly, resolutely hopeful. Hertzfeld was born on August 1st, 1976 in Alameda County, California. When Hertzfeld was 15, he decided to pick up a video camera and film some of his homemade comics, discovering a weird and cheap way of doing animation. He ended up later graduating from the University of California with a BA in Film Studies. Don Hertzfeld originally hand drew all of his films and filmed them using 35mm cameras. Don Hertzfeld stuck to a more old-fashioned idea of making animated films and used techniques such as multiple exposures, in-camera mats, and avant-garde photography. One of the earliest films Hertzfeld made that gained notoriety was called Rejected. My spoon is too big. My spoon is too big. My spoon is too big. I am a banana. This was the first film Hertzfeld made out of film school and it became a sensation. The film came to some theaters in 2000 and became a critical darling. It is the story of a bunch of cartoon vignettes that were so terrible and off-putting that the companies being sold these cartoons rejected them. The ending sees all the cartoons having an existential breakdown as they realize that they cannot be corporatized as a product their overall existence in this realm is utterly useless. The film was such a sensation it was even nominated for Best Animated Short Film at the Academy Awards. Several notable critics even called it one of the year's best films and an influential piece of animation. If anyone is unfamiliar with Don Hertzfeld as a figure, it is most likely that they have seen rejected compared to anything else he has made in his career. This film became a viral sensation because of the ways it reflected the humor of the time it came out, like the ASDF movies and the Laser Collection. Hertzfeld then decided later on to create an actual full-length film. He released it as three separate short films put into one. Everything will be okay, I am so proud of you, and it's such a beautiful day. Bill's mother put a heavy coat over him whenever he left the house, for fear that he might fall victim to something called walking pneumonia. She started doing this the winter after losing Randall, but then made him wear it every day for the next five years. In the summers, he also had to wear a helmet and asbestos safety gloves. These were the days she rarely left the house and shaved the cat on weekends. On his sixth birthday, his mother gave him a postage stamp and a piece of yarn, and hugged him for five minutes. The full film release would be called It's Such a Beautiful Day. This chronicles the life of Bill, a stick figure who lives a mundane existence, but is suffering from crippling mental disorders that has him go through a cerebral and existential journey through his own subconsciousness. The film released to limited theaters in 2012, and was a critical darling. As time has gone on, the film has achieved cult status and several believe it is not only one of the best animated films ever made, but one of the best films of all time, period. It is ranked as the 74th top rated film of all time on the popular film website Letterboxd.com. Hertzfeldt's latest films are the World of Tomorrow short film series. When you were only 13 years old, you nearly drowned in the lake behind your home. And if that were not bad enough, as, As your, your head, head slipped beneath, beneth the surface, your entire adolescent life flashed before your eyes, totally humiliating you for a second time. To this day, you still suffer from nightmares of drowning. At night, your memories of them will often replay in my own dreams. I confess that I sometimes look forward to drowning together when I turn out the light. Hertzfeldt's science fiction series tackles the existential nature of the future and what would happen if we could warn our younger selves of the future. He brought on his four-year-old niece to voice one of the characters and her rumblings inspired some of the aspects of the film. 
There are three short films at the moment in this series, and all three have been critical successes as well. They have won countless Sundance, Annie, and South by Southwest awards. I believe it to be some of the most cerebral and mind-boggling filmmaking ever made. The latest film, Episode 3, is able to explore more themes about love, loss, and finding connection in 30 minutes than the majority of two and a half hour epics. This is the result of a filmmaker who knows exactly what he is doing and how to play in his craft in the most efficient way he can. I think this perfectly describes the auteur theory. One of my favorite things about Hertzfeld is that he is so entirely of his own vision, it is hard to describe him with any other filmmaker. His larger themes about life, spirituality, and morality could be linked to Terrence Malick's later works like Trio Life, and some of the more surrealist humor could be compared to David Lynch's filmography, but I digress, those are the only two comparisons I can really think of. Don Hertzfeld's film all tackle one thing, existentialism. Existentialism is a form of philosophical inquiry that explores the nature of existence by emphasizing experience of the human subject, not merely the thinking subject, but the acting, feeling, living human individual. While Hertzfeld's films do not have human subjects in them, they all tackle the concepts of why we think and feel the way that we do. They all tackle the human condition. The three of his films we tackle today all deal with this universal theme. Rejected shows the struggle of corporations finding meaning outside the capitalistic society. Do their avant-garde nature hold any meaning if we do not sell product efficiently? It's Such a Beautiful Day shows the struggle of living with a mental illness. The idea of isolation and not understanding your role in the universe at the moment? It's existential dread. While the World of Tomorrow series is introspective existentialism, it's a what-if type of thinking. If I could warn myself of the outcome of my future, could I have a more productive life, or are our roles determined for the better of humanity? The idea is essentially, would you kill baby Hitler? Don Hertzfeld might be the ultimate auteur filmmaker if there ever was one. He literally uses pen and paper to create his films. Through his own company, Bitter Films, he is able to make ideas he has come to life in the exact vision that he has. He doesn't have the typical tools or method filmmakers usually use to create their films. I believe he is the most innovative and intriguing filmmaker in the last 20 years. A lot of his work is available on YouTube right now, so I would definitely check it out and get more involved in his work. I do believe that over time they will be considered some of the best ever made.